Hey guys, and welcome to QuickBooks Made Easy for Nonprofits. Quick tip. Uh, this is a tip for those of you that are using QuickBooks Online. Obviously, that's what's on the screen. Uh, and this is for the month of September of 2021. All right. So uh, this has to do with all of those users, those other people that get into your QuickBooks program and screw it up. All right. So what we're going to be doing is explaining to you how you can actually control what users can and can't get into within the program. All right. So before I go any further, I do want to make one comment about the versions of QuickBooks Online. So uh, I'm going to go to this gear, and I suggest you do the same after you're done with the recording and see what version you have. You may already know, but if you don't, click on this big fat gear and go to Account and Settings. It'll open up this window, and you'll see something that says Billing and Subscription. When you go to that, it'll tell you what version you have. Now, there are two versions that nonprofits should be using, one of two, either QuickBooks Plus or QuickBooks Advanced. Now, the reason why I bring this up now is because the ability to control what users can and can't do is better in QuickBooks Advanced than it is in QuickBooks Plus. Now, you may say to yourself, well, I don't want to get QuickBooks Advanced because it's $180 a month. It's $90 a month for a little while, and then it's going to be $180 a month, and that's just too expensive. Well, QuickBooks agrees with you, so if you're a nonprofit charity, which the majority of you are, you click on TechSoup. If you don't know about TechSoup, you really should, but you can purchase hardware and software there if you're a member. It's free to be a member, and you can purchase it at vastly discounted prices. So this is where everybody that's a nonprofit is getting their QuickBooks. They get their QuickBooks online from TechSoup. The online advanced version is $160 a year, not a month, a year, okay? And the plus version is only $75 a year. So I'm going to teach you all the things that you can do in terms of controlling what users can and can't do, but I want you to get advanced because you'll have more power there than you will in plus. You can still do some stuff in plus, but let me show you, okay? So I'm going to go to back to my QuickBooks company, and I'm going to click on the gear, and I'm going to click on Manage Users. This is where you can add and subtract users. Now, in QuickBooks Plus, you can have up to five users, and in QuickBooks Advanced, you can have up to 25 users. But depending upon what you want them to do, you can actually have an unlimited number of users. You'll see what I mean in a minute. Okay, so I'm going to go to manage users. Now I have the advanced version, so I have the ability to add up to 25 users. All right, now there's only one person that can control other users, and that's the primary admin, which of course is me. Okay, uh, you would be it for you, probably. Anyway, so uh, you can add users and you can control what they can and can't do. So let me show you. When I click Add User, it has this thing called Roles. So what the heck is that? Now, before I even get into the roles, I do want to show you. You see this Reports Only? This is an option. If you add a user and give them Reports Only access, they will only be able to look at reports and nothing else. You can do this if you have QuickBooks Plus as well as Advanced, and it does not count towards your limit of the number of users. So remember I told you you can have an unlimited number of users provided that most of them are just reports only users. Okay, So you can have up to 25 users in advance that can do all kinds of stuff, but you can have a million that are reports only. So your board members, I think that's a good idea. So I'm going to go ahead and click reports only. I'm going to click next. You just put their name, Bob, board member. And then you might want to spell it right. And you put their uh, email address there and click save and it'll send them an email. 
okay? And then they accept the email, and then they'll be able to get in, and the only thing they'll be able to do is board access only. I already have one, reports only, okay? Now, if you have advanced, though, when you click Add User, you have the ability to give them these roles. Now, you can create your own roles, but QuickBooks already has a bunch of roles for you. So let's go ahead and take a look at what the roles are, what that means. So basically, these are roles that you already have that you can alter to make them be exactly what you like. I'm going to look at the expense one first. This would be a role for people that you just want them to enter bills and pay bills, but you don't want them looking at the revenue side or entering payroll or seeing how much money's in the bank account or anything like that. So this role is already here. You can alter it, but I'm just going to leave it like it is. It won't let you go into any sales. Anybody who has this role will be able to enter bills and, and checks. They'll be able to create them, edit them, delete them. They won't be able to get into the bank account. They won't be able to deal with inventory. They won't be able to deal with anything related to payroll. They won't even be able to look at reports. All they can do is enter and pay bills. Now, you could add it if you wanted them to look at reports, but we'll just say all they can do is enter and pay bills. Okay. So once I have that one, let me go ahead and I've already got the role. The point is... Look at Carol Moneymaker. I'll edit her. I've added her, and I gave her the role of a sales manager. Wrong one. Sorry. Uh, here is Bill. That's the one I meant. I gave him the role of expense manager. Okay. Uh, Carol, I gave the role of sales manager. Let's take a look at what those people can do. So I'll go down to sales. I'll click edit. And they have access to sales. They have, do not have access to anything else. Now, of course, I can control this. Maybe I want her to be able to look at reports, so I'll give her full access to reports, okay? Uh, there we go. So I give her full access right there. All right. So I'll go ahead and click next. So uh, let's see. Sales manager, that sounds fine to me. Just call it sales manager. So basically, I've just changed this role, but now I'll go to Carol Moneymaker, and as you can see, I gave her that sales manager role. I just changed the role, so I effectively increased what she can do, but nevertheless, okay? So we've got four users here. I can do everything. Bill can only look at accounts payable. Carol can do the sales, and she can look at reports, uh, and then Bob can only look at reports. So let's go in to these other individuals. So I'm going to go ahead and sign out of my account, and I'll start by signing in to Carol's. Uh, and actually, hers is different. Uh, Carol, there she is. All right. So let's sign in and see what Carol can do. So she should, she has more than one company file she can look at in her Intuit account. But if you notice, her screen is very different from the other screen. I can't look at the bank account that's usually here. Okay, I should be able to add an invoice. I'll go ahead and click it. Yep, she can add an invoice. Let's see if she can pay a bill. She can't. When you click it, nothing happens. Okay, see how that works? Now, let's go over to or contrast this to Bill, who is just a payable person. Let's see what Bill can do. Bill will get a screen that looks very similar. It's interesting because it says he can add a customer or add a receipt. I'll click Add Receipt. He can't add a receipt. I wonder if he can look at reports. Reports aren't even listed here. Okay. So if you go up here to Plus New, you can see what he can do. He can't do anything related to customers, but he can enter a check and he can enter a bill, okay, which is really kind of cool, okay? Now, at this point, he can also print a check um, at some point in, a, in, in the future, in the not too distant future, you'll be able to even control that. You'll be able to get more granular, in other words. But let's go to the, uh, the board member. Let's see what the board member looks at. Let's see. Uh, there we go. 
Board members are supposed to only be able to look at reports. And look at that. All he has is a list of reports that he can look at. Now, he can look at a report. I'll go ahead and pick up the profit and loss. All dates. So he can do that. Looks like he can even customize the report. So he has report access. But if what happens if he double clicks on a transaction? You know, he wants to see what goes into something. I don't know. I'll click here, individual contributions. It looks like he can look at what makes it up. But let's say he wants to zoom in and get to more details. He can't. Okay. Now, you might wish that he could, but he can't. And the reason why is because in QuickBooks Online, if you can open up a screen, a transaction window, you're going to be able to edit it. They haven't gotten that sophisticated yet. So because he can only look at reports, he can't even get to the original transaction window. I mean, that's not a report. But anyway, that will allow you to be completely transparent to your board members um, without them uh, actually screwing with anything. All right, so I like that answer. Uh, and uh, that, my friends, is it. So I think that that's a really cool tip. And I guess I'll just leave you with, please get advanced. Please QuickBook, get QuickBooks advanced. Um, if you, and get it from TechSoup. Now, if you're paying a monthly subscription right now, um, you need to change to a QuickBooks subscription through TechSoup. It's a little bit of a process to make that happen. Um, and we have a little nonprofit service called a QuickBooks migration that will help you, let me just zoom in here, go from your QuickBooks to a new TechSoup, TechSoup QuickBooks online. All right. And I think that's it. I hope you enjoyed the tip. Later.